What is the truth behind Florida's dying mahi-mahi population? Scientists estimate that mahi catches have decreased up to 70% in the last five years. Meanwhile, they are one of the fastest reproducing fish in the sea. Today, we're headed offshore fishing and getting to the truth of why this highly sustainable fishery is in such steep decline. Woohoo! All right, guys, good morning. We are on our big boat today, our center console, doing some local fishing close to home. And we are in the under coastal, wanted to get on some bait real quick this morning. And we got some nice baits to start our day. That's what I'm talking about. Nice ones. Looks like a mixture of thread fins and maybe some pilchards. Mostly thread fins though. Great way to start the day. Look, I'm gonna feed the bird. He's so friendly, he's on the boat waiting for a fish. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> you can't eat that thing? Are you too small? He's just like, no, it's too big. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully that's good luck. It's weird. Yeah, that's weird. All right, we think we got a bite here. So down? I guess so, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. All right, so we haven't been out here in a while. Our line just on our outrigger rod over here just started slowly pulling out, but I don't know if it's actually really acting like a fish. And Brian's not sure either, and he's on the <laughs> rod. It might have just been like a really tiny thing. Oh, now it's a fish. Now I feel so a little bit of tail wagging. Okay. Maybe it's a tuna. Maybe it's a little bonita or something. It's going across the side. Great. It's up on top. You see it? Yeah. Maybe it's a barracuda. What is that? No, it's tiny. I'm going to guess a little bonita. Follow your fish. You're underneath that rod. Yes. All right, so Dorothy did a great job on the uh, on the bait this morning. We came out here with trolling, our standard spread. I'll show you what we're ca you're catching them on here. Woohoo! And we got a bonita in the boat. Sweet. Nice. We got that little Islander chugger right there. I love to pull all the time. Nice work. Yeah, nice, nice work. We don't want to keep him, do we? It's up to you. I mean, we, we need them. We're, they're about to disappear for the winter. So. Is, you make a ship out of this? Of course I can. All right. I mean, they're going to be gone soon. So those, those pliers, our sizzle. Benita are going to leave our waters here. Yeah. So we're going to. Yeah. So we don't eat these false albacore, but we'll save with some strips to make baits also, out of. Darcy likes to do. He's also bleeding now, so he's not going to live. No, that's also true. Let's open the thing. Be careful when you snap the whole thing. Work. Yeah, you can see the hook is in his gill. Oh, pop. Just watched it pop. Fish on. We got a fish on the planer around in the corner. What? That was crazy. That never happened ever. All right, right on camera. I just and back down on the drag a little bit. All right, you got it. Let me get it. Sure. You drive. I'll drive. I was just going to bring the speed back up, too. He's on Good. the surface. All right. Same depth. Yeah, could probably know the Bonitas if they're in the same depth, but we'll see. So that planer just tripped and I was just going to drop it back to the fish, but honestly, that's, I didn't need to do that. He was there. Planer. So if you guys are watching the videos, you know we have a planer bridle system. All right, reel, reel. Planer comes right off. Just spread the boat up just a tad. Why? Fish is fast. Keep pressure on them. Just a tad, because the fish is going faster than you. Feel like you're flying. What? Feel like you're flying. Feel like what? Feel like you're flying. You turn that clicker off. All right, Benita? Benita. All right, I'm not going to gaff him. Oh, a little bigger. Not nice. the same size. Back to back, Benita. Yeah, went through a school of Benita. That's all good. That means hopefully there's some wahoo around. We had a bite, a cut, a bite before that actually cut the bait a little bit. Yes. They either don't cut the bait because they got no teeth. Got smoked. We got in Benita heaven. <laughs> We're in 290. Or maybe it's a little school of blackfin. Yeah, I wish. Benita. There's definitely been little blackfin around. All right, he's got a little one. 
perfect size for it. We're going to throw him back, right? No, keep him. What? Keep him. What, you have crab traps? Yeah, keep him. All right, we've got crab trap season coming up. We're going to keep him for that. So that's three fish in less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Awesome. 290. Not on there. Yeah, it is. 100%. It's a little fish. All right. Yeah. You got your planer rod right. Planer coming up. It's not big. No. You can back the drag off if you want. There's a fish on the back one, too. Right there. Oh, that's your fish. That's my, my bad. That's my fish. Hey, he's skipping. That's Brian's fish skipping back there. Yeah, a lot of bones out today. A lot of bones. Out deep, too. And we, you know, you guys ask us this all the time, but in our home waters here, we are like closest to where the Gulf Stream comes to the entire eastern seaboard, so it drops off pretty quick. And you know, land is right behind us. We're probably two miles from land, and we're in 320 feet of water. So we got a big ledge right here. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, I got it, Sizzle. You gotta stop talking. Is this a barracuda? Yes. Or a little teeny wee-hoo. You never know. What should I get, the gaff? I don't know, it's too small the gaff. Might be a kingfish. No way, it's in 300 feet of water. Oh. It's a kuda. We'll yeah. take it for trap bait. All right. I think he's a keeper. Right. You wanna flip yeah, he's got to be over 18 inches. You want to flip him in? You want to yeah. flip him in? Yeah, I'll flip him in. OK. I think if I can get his head up again. Yeah, you need to get it up. There you go. There you go. Woo! Big old stinky barracuda. Whoa. Nice one. You're going to keep him for bait? Sure. All right. Monster. It's a nice scoot up for this area. Yeah. Out deep, too. Woo. On the pink and white. Let me get that off before he bites it off. He's so stinky. Now, I reiterate to you. Oh, you almost put me in a lake. Take it easy. Oh, good. It came off. It came off. Perfect. Two lessons just to show you. One is we are using mono right to the hook around here. And I just caught a massive barracuda on mono. It's like 40 pound mono. That's how tough the fishing is. Um, so it works, okay? You're gonna get some bite off, but you also get bites. And the other thing is you see that hook just came right out. I have to do anything. People always ask, why are you keeping the boat moving? Because I don't understand. You gotta keep the boat moving, keep the pressure on the hook. When you're trolling, I say this all the time. When you're trolling, the fish bites the hook, rips a big hole. Boat's going this way, fish is going this way, makes a big hole in his lip. Got to keep the pressure on, got to keep the boat moving. So, nice. Right, Sizzle? Right. Whatever he said. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. So we went to the CCA dinner last night, the Conservation Club. And Darcy, tell them what you got at the auction. Uh, a cool little, like, decoration. Uh, what else did you buy? And a reel. A reel. She bought a reel. You guys have any idea how many reels we have? I couldn't believe it. Too many. It's like going to the, it's like bringing sand to the beach. I told her, you gotta sell it. Yep. Not I to, messed up. Not to mention she's kind of sponsored by Akuma. If you wanted the reel. Kind of sponsored? That doesn't even make sense, but okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not totally sure anymore. I haven't talked to him in a while. Anyhow, it was nice. Do normal things that normal people do. Yes, we're the control chaos fishing. Our good friends, we had a nice, real nice time. But anyway, thanks to the CCA for inviting us, uh, having us at the dinner of food and beer and open bar and- It was awesome. Auction, so it was really nice. It's, and check out that CCA. It, they do a lot of good work for the state of Florida and the conservation and this kind of thing. They do. What is it, the Conservation Something Association of Florida? Coastal. Conservation. Coastal Conservation Association, CCA. Nice. Yeah, and we went to uh, the Palm Beach chapter. Got it. So, all right. The Palm Beach what? Chapter. So we're gonna South do South Palm Beach. South Palm Beach chapter. Yeah, but they combined it with the North Palm Beach, so with the whole whatever. That's not important. Yeah. So we're gonna do this for another half hour, and then we're gonna run out and look for mahi, but uh, we'll keep you advised. Two different species. I caught that. Caught that one bonita on an Isla Mirada flyer. The regulation of the Barracuda, 18 to 36 inches, and you keep one over 36. That thing was big when it came in. It's got to be over 36. Yeah. Okay, there's a log rope pegged off the south side. Just stop. I can see it going way back. We probably should get it out of the water so we save a boat here. Um, but yeah, so 
we are we're done trolling close to shore. We're headed out looking for mahi, calling, running and gunning, and he stopped when he come across something. So we saw these buoys floating, and I can see a rope extending past it. So you always gotta check out flopsam and all kind of debris that might be hanging out in the ocean. But maybe we should just do our part and get it out of the water. Okay. It's actually not the longest rope. It's probably like 20 foot of rope. You want those buoys, don't you? I, I actually have plenty of buoys. <laughs> set. Some commercial, commercial tra trapper or <laughs> crab guy or whoever lost their rig here. It's actually fairly new. It hasn't been in the water too long. But there's nothing floating on it and it's kind of a danger. Somebody could run past that and this could get in your engine. That's no good. You saved the boat. Definitely saved many boats. <laughs> it's pretty close to land. I still think now. you want those buoys. Um, I actually have plenty of buoys for stone crab season this year. But yeah, they're backup buoys. There you go. All right, so you came all the way out to about 1,200 feet. Found another thing floating. All kinds of bait fish and trigger fish underneath it. Baby triple tails. No mahi. We haven't really seen much going on. But uh, we got these baits anyway, so you know, the, the circle of life is kind of there's something floating on top. The little fish congregate around that, and then the bigger fish. And then deeper and deeper, you got hopefully you got mahi and maybe wahoo. So we're gonna drop a bait down and see what happens. There's mahi here. I, you hope they just come right up to your boat, which happens all the time, but. Might as well drop them and people have been catching mahi. Yeah, you never know. It could be down there. For the shot, you don't think be seen, so I mean, whatever. Just all right, came across a little teeny stick things. and. That's a teeny stick. Think you saw a, Thank God I turned, told you to turn around. No, 100 cents saw one. He was sitting with all the little baits. All right, throw it out. He was pulled up on it and it kind of like spooked the mahi and ran, ran away from it for a little bit. Let me just drop it really quick. I'm gonna circle around for you. All right. And keep an eye on those things. Big mahi, big mahi, get him, Brian, get him, Brian. All right, guys, so we came in. We were about 12 miles out. Nice Didn't catch fish. anything. And then we came back to put our, came back to drift some baits, and I got a surprise fish on. He ate both our baits. Did he? Yeah. We're hooked on the same fish. <laughs> That's funny. We're literally hooked on the same fish. How is that possible right now? All right, somebody got to get the gaff. Well, I'm going to drop this rod, I guess, right? I don't know. I'm going to loosen the drag on I feel on like it. he's on Wait, mine. Wait, hold on, hold on. Do I got another fish? You might. No, it's the same fish, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same fish. Yep, right, we're eating both baits. All right, I'm gonna loosen Come the on. I'm gonna loosen the drag on this, okay? Because he's yeah. hooked on this rod too. So you're gonna try to bring him on the other side. Let me get the gaff. Nice. Nice fish. In the house. Woo! <laughs> we did it. We ran 12 miles out. And came back in shore in 100 feet of water. 130 feet of water. And just hooked a nice mahi we were looking for all day. <laughs> Literally ate both our baits. And I saw the splash while I was rigging up for the bottom. And I closed the bale. But sure enough, he ate both of our flat lines. Nice. Hanging out of his mouth. Look at that. Stud fish. <laughs> That's how you gaff a fish, by the way, Brian. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. Woo. Beauty. That's a nice fish. One's out. Nice job. Okay, this one I can get out too. Darcy going underneath the gill. Yeah. Get that deep hook out. First time we're one of the first times using these vector hooks. We got an eye cast. But they worked they worked really good. Nice. That's a beautiful cow, Sweet. by the way. That's a fe female mahi right there because she had doesn't have the broad head. The head of a male sticks straight out. Nice. A beautiful fish. Nice eight, nine pounder right there. So I'll show you guys you just start turning blue. So cool. Literally blue. It just got smoked. Oh God. Am I going to be able to catch this fish? Is it freaking S word? Oh, he's smoking it. Can we get him up? We I'm trying, it. I'm trying, babe. We, got I got the, I got we the just got a shark up. below us. I got the strike up. Benita? I think so. Okay. Could be a tuna. It's Benita. All right, we're not going to get him. Woo! All right. I got lucky on that. Nice work. <laughs> got it below the fish, the bird, well, the birds, and got it up before the S word came up. Yeah. We did. 
Not too shabby. We keep catching fish all day. Yeah, no complaints. Something's all over it. <laughs> A lot of sharks around. This is coming right up. Here's a yellowtail. Color, go. Oh, I didn't realize you had a thing. Where is it? Remora. Remora. Okay. Just the remora. All right. I didn't realize you had such a long leader. I'm sorry. 15 foot. All right, I got him. Just a remora. We just, that's the uh, shark's best friend right there. They literally have like a symbiotic relationship with the sharks and the sharks don't eat them. They look very similar to a cobia, kind of. But that's the crazy sucker fish with the sucker on top of his head. Nice little. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Comes. Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! Look at that! Look at that! Little baby snapper! Short mud. Sweet! Maybe I can drop one down real fast while we're oh, still yeah. here. Okay, you tapped. All right, we got one button going down on what the sequelizer on one side, another one going down on the other. Going up on the other. Oh, it's another one, something. It's one. Oh my God. Big You're catching runner. every fish today. <laughs> <laughs> Big old blue runner. Careful my glove. But... No. You got it. I didn't pull any drag. My drag's not that tight. What is it? Like another runner. It's a rain, it's a yellowtail. Is it? Yeah. Get him up. Nice. Beauty. Beauty. Nice. Let's throw it right back down. Right back down. It's yeah. a flag. Get get it off. Get it off. That is a nice one. <laughs> Catching every <laughs> fish now. Nice flag. That's a big one, actually. How big? Let me measure it real quick. Sure. Go ahead, you fish, you fish. Smoke that. He's a 16, no, see a 16, 8, 17, something like that. All day, nice fish. Oh, beautiful fish. A remora, a, mangro a mutton snapper, a, a blue, blue runner, runner, and now a yellowtail. Yeah. Let's see the next species I can put in the boat. So I really got a delicious dinner tonight. I mean. We killed it today. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we came out, we have we slept in until like six, which is late for us. Caught a ton of bait. Haven't been out here in five weeks on our boat. Caught bonitas for Caught all kinds of stuff. And barracuda for crab trap bait. Caught that nice mahi. I mean, we've had fairly steady action. Yeah. We picked up garbage out of the ocean. I mean, I don't know what else we could expect. There's hardly anyone out here. There's no one out here. Here's a little mora behind me. All right, guys, back at the house. Another great day on the water. Awesome day on the water. Caught one mahi, but what's behind the dying mahi population, Darcizzle? That's why we're here to explain the truth behind the dying <laughs> mahi population, or at least what we think and what we've researched. Yeah, and I, you know, it, this is a very popular topic. Darcy didn't get start, start clean as mahi, which we've yes. done several times before on the channel. Yes. But, uh, you know, everyone knows there's less mahi now, right? I mean, the charter captains in the Keys. Yeah, that's definitely like a common topic of discussion for us down here, particularly in the Florida Keys and the southeastern portion of Florida. Yeah. We all talk about that. And honestly, we've seen it ourselves in the last decade of fishing. The fish are way smaller. Yeah, and when you find fish, they're really small. And sometimes a group of them come and go real fast. And like today, you know, we went out 12, 13, 14 miles and, and then came back and, and caught one fish, which is great. But you know, yeah. everyone thinks it used to be better now. You know, there's a million things which it could be, right? Um, one of the things you found, Darcy, right, was like the, the long liners. A lot of people blame commercial fishermen, right? Yes. Well, yeah, for us, us recreational fishermen, we really blame the commercial guys that are out there, particularly <laughs> out not, of not me. Mexico. There's a <laughs> lot of long lines down there. And a lot of people seem to believe that that's where a lot of the smaller fish end up and harvested due to the long lines. Right, and they can set out like a line which can be like 30 miles long with all these hooks on it. And there's also guys in the Keys, but um, you know, supposedly, and you know, there's limits on that. There's something called the TAC or the TAC, it's like total aggregate catch for like the region. 
And the, and the commercial guys only get like 7% or maybe 10% of that. Um, you know, I'm not up on all the regs, but that's the gist of it. And my understanding is they don't even catch that limit. So, you know. It's really not that much. Commercial guys can't, you know, shouldn't really take all the blame or maybe who knows the blame, but of course, you know, recreational fishermen always, everyone always says, you know, it's this limit mentality and Instagram. And, yes. And, and maybe some charter captains too, you know, they want to get business and they're putting food on the table, right? Yes. So they want to take these pictures and make their clients happy, which is perfectly natural. So for many years, you know, right before they just changed the regulations down here, it was 10 mahi per angler, max of 60 per boat. And now I've seen all those Instagram pictures over the years, but you know, the entire front end of the center console is covered and mahi, a lot of little ones, honestly, we call them chickens down here or schooly fish. Um, but you'll see a boat full of a limit of 60 fish, but what do you do with all those fish? Yeah, I, I don't know what you do with 60 fish. Especially you know, if they're under three pounds. Like we never, I'm, I'm, we've been guilty of taking those pictures, I'm not gonna lie. Um, we've, I don't think we've ever limited out a mahi We have never alone, caught a limit of mahi um, in our entire lives. I my hand and I think here. that's the good thing about us and our channel is that like we show, we don't have that limit mentality. We're out there to have fun and put some fish on the table for us to eat for that week. But we only take what we can eat and then we're done. We're not out there trying to catch 60 mahi. We're just not. Right, so I mean, like if you catch 10 mahi, they say you catch 10 mahi, eat mahi, and then eat some the next day. And then you have six or seven in the refrigerator. And then, you know, you probably, you know what happens in my house at least is, and we don't do it anymore because of this, is they freeze and then you get freezer burn a year later and then you throw them out. So it's really a waste. So just take what you know you can eat, you know, the matter of the limit. Yes. And, and I, you know, can't really blame these guys that try to make a living, but I did see Dar Sizzle, I don't know if I told you this even, on Instagram recently, the two conks, who recently came under a lot of fire, honestly, for another event I don't even want to get into, I don't really yeah. care enough, but yeah. they filmed the show and they released a 50 pound dolphin. They did, they did. So, you know, that's setting a great example and he's a major charter operation, so, you know, you know, I don't know if you, you know, I understand you guys got to make money, but so I'm not really begrudging that. But, you know, personally, what I think, it's, you know, there's a, I think it's two things really. It's the climate. Factors, yes. Is, is, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the politics are. I don't really care. But the fact of the matter is the water temperature is higher than it was. So I don't know if that's just going to go back naturally. If human cause it, I don't care. We all know the water temperature is high. That is. And we fact. also know there's more boats out there. So, you know, and I found this migration pattern thing and Darcy's, you can see how she cleaned this. She's doing a great job. She, and Darcy using her, well, tell them about those knives. The Smith, that's your Smith knife, right? Yes. Quick. This is my eight inch Star Sizzle Curve Flex Filet Knife. These have been available now for a couple years. They're awesome. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link the information down below for you guys. I even have links to the knife on my store website, but you can find it no matter what, or just do a quick Google search, Star Sizzle Filet Knife. It'll pop up. I know a lot of you guys have supported me, so thank you so much. But I made a cut short right here because I'm gonna to try to make a couple strips out of the belly of this fish. Oh nice. So we're gonna use the whole fish in other words. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. then the carcass will be saved for traps. Crab, Sto crab traps. And this is Darcy's favorite sharpener. She likes to use the stone. Yep, I got a tri hole sharpener. A simple pull through for yeah. maybe easier for some of you. Yep, it's got a coarse a, like a fine side and then a razor sharp side, which is the Arkansas stone. Nice. So you really can hone that knife down, but I mentioned this a lot. You really got to practice and just make sure you keep your knives extra sharp. It's a tool. They're going to dull out over time, especially when you fillet a lot of fish. So I spent a lot of time making sure this was razor sharp before I dive in on this fish. All right, but now I'm going to skin it. <laughs> so right, so I, I have this thing with migration and, and I used the metaphor of the, the black tip sharks and also the mullet. Because you know, those fish come down and they're looking for a certain water temperature where, they, where they're going to spawn, right? Yes. Or congregate. And every year, it doesn't seem like, particularly this year, the black tips don't come down as far, the mullets don't come down as far, and I, my theory is that's because the water temperature is maybe just, maybe a degree or two higher, maybe a half a degree, and the fish come down, and then they don't come down any And it changes their patterns. Changes their patterns. And then, of course, we all know there's a million more boats than there were 20 years ago. That's a fact. Yes, and particularly the last five years, and with the pandemic and everything, Right. It seems like everyone down here in Florida bought a boat. Like, right. the market exploded. Yeah, and this, but this problem's been going on for 10 or 20 years. People have been noticing this. And with the electronics and the amount of people on the, on the ocean and the population of Southeast Florida exploded, there's just a lot of boats. So if you're a fish who's afraid of getting killed, why would you go there? I wouldn't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, I, did, I did some research on this. And I, going back to the migration pattern, you can see all the fish in the Gulf, and there's not even a limit in the Gulf. This is a really cool map. Size limit, yeah. So they come up past Southeast Florida, and maybe that's a small fish after they spawn in the Gulf. Then they go up north, then they see they come around this big circle. 
And of course, that's maybe a year or two later, and, or a couple seasons. And, and maybe they don't go down all the way to the Bahamas because of the water temperature. So maybe they just cut across and, and don't migrate down to the Keys again once they're Miss bigger. It. And so they're just looping around and out of here. Because a lot of people also report that the fish up north, out of Banks and up in the Gulf Stream in Northeast Florida, even out of Jacksonville, they're still fish, still bigger fish. So, you know, that looks like it really could be something to me. Just, and maybe that'll change back in years. Um, you know, I don't know. But the only thing we can do now is catch less, really, or take less. And they recently lowered the limit here in the state of Florida on this side to, from 10 to 5 fish. Correct, per person. So or a max of. What is it, 35? I don't remember, but it's five per person. Yeah. And there's almost a limit. You're going to get six, whatever it is, um, max on your boat. I'll post it here. But, you know, so those are the kind of things that we're working with. And, you know, so we're not really sure, but I mean, the pressure and the migration tactics and the water temperature seems to all be huge factors to me. But, yes, and then we just want to quickly mention, like, you know, this is why mahi is so harvested and so plentiful around the world and like one of the top fish that people eat in restaurants and in stores where you buy fish um, is because mahi are supposed to be one of the fastest growing fish in the sea. They call it the rabbit of the sea, but they grow at an incredibly fast rate. And within a year's time, I think they can get up to 20 pounds, close to 20 pounds, but also they spawn about three times a year. So that's like a rabbit, like they are constantly <laughs> reproducing yeah. and they lay thousands of eggs. It's like somewhere approximately between 33,000 and 66,000 eggs for one fish. Right. It's wild. So it's also really a great sustainable fishery. Like if something wasn't happening, we'd have a ton of fish because they, they start having babies at like four or five months old. They're like yeah. adults at one year. They spawn three times a year. They lay all these eggs. And so it's nuts. It's really highly sustainable. And but, it's a um, great eating fish. But there seems to be some sort of, you know, there's way less now. So I think the, the gist of it is, you know, just, you don't got to catch every, every fish in the ocean maybe. That's all. Yeah. And I think we've done a good job of showing that in the thousand videos we've now made on our channel <laughs> over the years that, again, we have never kept the mahi limit. We have never caught a two-man limit on our boat ever. Like we, max we put, we put on our boat is maybe seven or eight mahi in one day. I think that's the max we've ever caught, right. so. We've caught a lot in the Keys with like during a tournament or something. That's different, yeah. yeah that's different. That's different, but like us out there fishing by ourselves, like recreationally, like we don't take a lot of fish, guys. We just don't, I mean, right. you see it. Right. All right, so good job playing that fish star sizzle. She's gonna cut that up in even pieces so I can cook it evenly. What should I do with this head, big head chunk? I just leave it on there? Yes, yeah, leave it on there. I'll put okay. it in the sauce or it'll chop up. It just looks it. awkward. Yeah, it's, that, I got these three see, pieces. See, that's what I'm saying. You want to cook it, you want to cut them in even pieces so they cook evenly. Yeah. Now, I got a super surprise for you guys. I'm using a recipe out of the cookbook. The Dar Sizzle, no, cooking with pudding cookbook. It's the Dar Sizzle Offshore official fish cookbook featuring pudding's recipes. It's available. Let's go in the house. We'll tell you all about it. Woohoo! <laughs> I got to hurry up. I got to stop talking. You got to play the other <laughs> side because I'm starving. Let's go. Great job playing that monstrous mahi, Dar Sizzle. Thanks so much. And welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. We finally got the cookbook done edition. I got it done. I know I've been talking about it for five, maybe five years. It's done. It's available for you to purchase right now. Okay? It's an ebook. It has all of our top recipes. I'm actually cooking a recipe from my phone right now. You can also print it out, whatever you want. We'll put the link down in the description below. And today we are cooking. I think it's recipe number 18 on page 43. There's over two dozen recipes on there. And this cookbook is extra awesome because I put, we always get the question, how do I cook this fish pudding? How do I flay this fish pudding? Dar sizzle actually with that part, but always asking how to, do, how to cook these fish. There's an index in the back of every fish I could find. And it indexes to a recipe you can use for that fish. Okay, so if you wanna cook a mutton snapper, you go to the back, mutton snapper, recipes on page 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever it is. Okay, kingfish, same thing. We got the stone crabs on there. We got all kinds of fish, striped bass, all kinds of recipes for all those fish. Again, check it out. Links will be in the description below. You can download it today and you have it. And the price, it's a limited time price, it's 20 bucks. The price is gonna go up next month for the holidays. Okay, this is offered to you guys, introductory price. All right, so get on it. Never worry about that again. It also has the video links. So if you want to see how we cooked it, see how we cleaned it, see how we caught it, you can do that too at the same time. Every recipe has at least one video attached to it so you can see exactly what happened. 
Let's go. All right, I've already taken the liberty of cooking the fish. You guys have seen this cooked fish at Mahe a hundred times, right? I did it in my nice uh, cast iron frying pan. You guys got me. A little bit of oil, olive oil on the bottom. When I make a sauce, I like to use olive oil so it makes the fish a little crunchier, a little more well done on the edges. I just put it in there, I leave it for four minutes. When the edges start to get a little bit of white, it starts to creep around on the top, I flip it. Flip the small pieces first, of course, and then I get around to flipping the big pieces, take the pieces that are cooked already, take them out. Take the thinner pieces out first. You don't want to overcook the fish. We're ready for the sauce, sizzle. Here we go. We're going to use a little bit of oil. First, we're going to be just sauteing up some garlic. Get that nice and soft. And some crushed pepper flakes. I don't need to write this down in the description. You know why? Because it's in the cookbook. Okay, it's in the cookbook. Put a pinch of those. Darcy doesn't like those too much, so we're not going to use a lot. All right, that's about a minute. We're going to add some more ingredients. We're going to add our shrimp. These are just frozen shrimp from the store. You don't have any fresh shrimp around here, so you're going to cook these up a little bit. All right, now we're going to add some tomatoes. Really, you can put in how many as you want. Scallions. You can see there's a lot of vegetables in here. Parsley. I mean, it already looks, I mean, it already looks ridiculous. We haven't added the butter and the honey yet. Probably need a bigger pan. That's a cook we're putting for you, though. Okay, here comes the magic. I've turned off the heat. We're adding butter and honey. Now remember, this is only one of the dozens of recipes you will get in the pudding cookbook. You guys looking at this? Everybody knows this is going to be delicious. I mean, come on. My mouth was water. This is crazy. All right, guys, it's time to party. We got some broccoli. We got some fish. Look at this delicious mahi. Oh, let's put some yellowtail on there, a little yellowtail. You know, we add more later. Now, you guys watching this? Look at this. All the shrimp. All right, Dar Sizzle. <laughs> I know we had this before, Very and it was hungry. delicious. How, did you see the recipe? How could you go bad? I want to eat it by the spoonful without any fish. But isn't like the honey bad for you? For the diet? Why are you raining on my parade? I'm not raining on your parade. I'm just asking you a question. It's a it's really a, good. It adds, it, adds, it, adds, it adds like a little extra sweetness taste to like this mixture. Yeah. But the tomatoes, all that stuff is really good. Yeah, but it, it's two. It's only. It was only. We doubled the recipe. It was, and it's two ounces of honey, and then and there's some in the pan. And you have, so you have less than an ounce in your plate. And I have less than an ounce in my plate. So it's not a ton of honey. You know mm. what I'm saying? Wow. Mm. So delicious. Really good. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you know, and we say a lot of times that Mahi is not the greatest fish in the world. Like muttons and groupers and snappers are usually better. And uh, but people love Mahi, of course. But and this this really makes it into like a special meal that you would get at a restaurant. Very simple recipe. And the cookbook That's a is, good point. It's full of simple recipes. This is something you would totally get served like in the Florida Keys if you like cook your catch or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you guys want to cook your own fish and get out there, really recommend the cookbook, everything he said. <laughs> Jump on it before the prices go up. But wow, this is really good. It's so good. Really good. So click the link down below if you're interested. Until All right, guys, thanks for watching, and until our next adventure, follow Bye, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Cheers.